Hi everyone, it's Steph here if you don't already know and on this channel I just talk about all things careers and all things lifestyle and in today's video I'm going to be bringing you my top productivity tips for lawyers and I'm going to be using my current favourite productivity read and it's called The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey to help me with that. So if you like this kind of content, please do make sure that you like, comment and subscribe and also give me a follow on Instagram and complete disclaimer here. I know I've said these are productivity tips for lawyers because I do work in the law, but honestly, productivity tips are very transferable. So whatever industry you're in or if you're a student or whatever, you will find these helpful too. Okay, so first things first, if you would like to get this book for yourself, I've popped a link in the description below just to kind of help you out so you don't have to search for it. I found it to be a really, really informative book and I quite like the way it's written. So basically, this author, Chris Bailey, decided to do a whole year of productivity projects. So like literally 365 days of you name it, he tried it. He tried only using his smartphone for one hour a day for like a month. Um, he tried waking up every day at 5.30 for like a month. He tried trying meditating for like 12 or so hours a day or something like that for like a couple of weeks. Like there were so many different productivity things that he tried and he kind of went through his process behind why he thought they would be good to try, what he learned from it, what types of things he looked at in terms of him as a person to work out whether that would be a beneficial tip for him or not. So I found it really, really helpful because I find that sometimes with productivity tips, people don't often look at who they are as an individual and like what their lifestyle is like and whether it's therefore helpful to actually use certain productivity tips or not. So it was written really, really well in my opinion and I would definitely recommend it. One thing that he also did as well is that he broke down productivity in a way that I've not thought about before. So generally speaking, people kind of use productivity synonymously with time management, right? Because the idea is that if we can be more, you know, efficient with our time, then we are being really, really productive. And Time management is definitely a part of productivity, but there are actually two other elements that we don't often think about. And those two other elements are attention and energy. Attention being how well you actually focus on a task, so like how you can kind of keep your mind concentrated on what it is that you need to do. I am also going to use that same kind of framework where I'm gonna look at time management, attention and energy. Okay, so the first time management tip that I can give you, which has honestly, honestly saved my life, if I'm being honest, is Inbox Zero. Inbox Zero is an absolute godsend, like I cannot stress it enough. And the name will suggest that like the idea is that your inbox stays at zero. And as I'm sure many of you know, that's sometimes virtually impossible. Like the unfortunate thing about our inbox is that we don't necessarily always have control over what comes in because obviously people just email us, right? But the concept of Inbox Zero is more about making sure that your mind stays clear and it's not cluttered up by the fact that you're constantly receiving emails every five minutes. How can you actually put Inbox Zero into practice? It's things like, if you have Outlook, this is actually a lot easier because you know obviously on Outlook, you get that little kind of pop-up summary at the bottom where you see the first line of an email, right? So you can kind of assess pretty quickly whether it's an email that you need to respond to immediately or whatever. So when you see an email coming in, you need to decide a couple of things. First of all, is this an email that actually needs to be in your inbox? What do I mean by that? I don't know about you, but like sometimes you might just get company-wide emails or you might get like um, a news article or something like that. Those are emails that unless you are genuinely interested in and you're genuinely gonna go back and read those things, which let's be honest, you're probably not, those emails can be deleted. They don't need to be in your inbox. They don't need to be cluttering up your mind space. They can go straight away. If it's an email that it's clearly not something that you know how to answer, or it's clearly something that either you need to ask a question to your supervisor or to the relevant person who has that information for you, forward that email to that person with, you know, obviously what it is that you need them to do. Don't just forward them a random email so that it's no longer cluttering up your mind space. It's kind of in their space now because they're the ones who have to deal with it, right? If it's an email that you can respond to straight away, and by straight away, I mean literally in 30 seconds. Like if it's anything longer than that, that's not an email that you can respond to straight away. And it might be a good example of this is whereby like, let's say your supervisor has asked you to do something and therefore your response might be, yes, yeah, sure, like I I'll be able to get to this this afternoon or when is the deadline for this or something like that. If it's that kind of quick response, then sure, you can send that out straight away. Anything else that is left, this is where it's actually quite important to have a filing system in my personal opinion, but I know not everybody files emails. So if you don't wanna have one, that's fine. And I'll probably do a separate email on how separate email, separate video on how I actually file all of my emails at work just to make it a lot easier for me. So 
if it doesn't fall into any of those categories whereby you can delete it forward it or respond to it immediately then you need to file it and it needs to kind of go into your process list i guess and then you need to have a set time where you go back and address those depending on the nature of your work you may need to address your emails either more frequently or less frequently right so for me personally within an hour generally i like to have responded to all emails so once i have like decided whether it can fit into one of those three really quick categories i'll carry on with whatever it was i was doing and then on the hour that's when i personally like to check my emails i will then go back to the ones that i filed and make sure that those are all kind of either responded to or if there was a task that i needed to do i've dealt with that task that way no email is ever kind of just left unattended to for too long so that is the first tip that i can give to you inbox zero I will also put a link below to a really, really good article that kind of explains Inbox Zero far better than I ever could, if I'm being honest. Second time management tip I could give you is time boxing. Now, this is a thing that I've spoken about before, but I don't know why, like once we leave school and we don't have to do exams ever again, we forget that when there is a constraint around what you have to do, you actually just get it done. Like, I don't know if you remember or if you did like humanities as any of your subjects, but in like history, for example, when you have to answer like seven questions in two hours, it seems impossible the first time you're told you have to do that and yet you finish your degree and you're here today right so you need to apply that same mindset to your work if you're given a task set a deadline for when you need to finish it like regardless of whatever your supervisor has told you you tell yourself look i'm gonna do this in two hours or i'm gonna do this in one hour and obviously be realistic with the deadline don't tell yourself that you can do a company search report, which is a great example, because as I've said before, that's a typical trainee task in the debt finance team. And a company search report takes anything from like two to three hours, right? So don't tell yourself you can do a company search report in 40 minutes because you probably can't. But also don't spend five hours doing a company search report because it's something that you know it can be done within two to three hours. Do you get what I mean? So just set a time a realistic time around tasks that you get given and then actually like literally set an alarm on your phone and force yourself to have to stop what i personally do is i set an alarm about half an hour before i want to finish a task because i know that i can generally wrap up whatever i'm doing in about half an hour if you're somebody who can wrap up in about 10 minutes then set your alarm 10 minutes before you need to finish a task whatever works best for you that is how i personally have been managing my time and i've been doing quite well with it Second thing I want to look at is energy and this tip is taken directly from Chris Bailey's book and I thought it was really really helpful. So the concept around using energy to help with your productivity is basically that you should be doing your harder tasks or your more kind of energy focused tasks at the times of day where you actually have the most energy. Now you may not actually know the times of day where you have the most energy which is fine. If you don't know there's actually a really good task in the book where Chris kind of instructs you to map out your energy levels throughout the day i.e when you wake up how do you feel like do you feel like you are ready to kind of take on a big piece of work are you able to do that what are your energy levels like and every hour kind of map out what your energy levels are like so that over the course of maybe three or so weeks you can create an average um i think he used a line graph but you can kind of create an average look to see okay between the hours of 9 a.m to midday i'm really really productive between midday and 2 p.m i'm not so productive between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m., I'm really productive again. Five to seven, not so much so. And then seven to 11, I'm actually really productive. Once you know that you're that type of person, you can then try to, as much as you can, because I do admit that obviously, as a junior in particular, I don't necessarily have that much control over my time. Try and schedule your tasks around when you have the most energy so that you're just gonna be more productive. Because if you feel better at certain times, if you are more productive at certain times, and that is the best time to do the work, right? Okay, so the third tip that I can give you to help with your productivity is around your attention. But one thing that I have started doing, and I've incorporated this into my morning routine, is that I sit down for five minutes, so I set a timer on my phone for five minutes, and I just close my eyes and I breathe, and I literally just count my breath. So I'll literally just be like, you know, and I will count that as one, and I will just keep doing that until my timer goes off. Now that is actually a form of meditation. If you're somebody who is like, you're well, you're very well versed in meditation and you can kind of shut off everything from the world and you can focus on, you know, whatever it is that you need to do during meditative time or whatever. And you can do that for like 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Great, do that. Me personally, I do my meditation for five minutes every day and it works for me. I do it in the morning as soon as I wake up. It really helps me just 
align and focus for the day. So I would suggest that's what you try as well. Okay, so my first tip was inbox zero. Please do check out the article down below if you're just not sure about how I explained it. Second tip was time boxing. Make sure you set yourself a deadline for your tasks. Third tip was energy mapping. Do try that experiment for three weeks where you can just try and work out when your best time is to actually do work and then try and plan around that. And then last but not least, make sure that you try to meditate or just try to clear your head so that you can focus a bit better. If you like this type of productivity content, please do make sure that you like, comment and subscribe and give me a follow on Instagram too as I post more tips and content there. Bye.